Hey guys, welcome to the Jurassic Prepper channel. My name is Joe. Today we're talking about how to correctly build a Faraday cage so we can protect our vital electronics when the power grid goes out for good and we'll have force multipliers when Mad Max kicks in. How many of us have spent hard earned cash on tactical flashlights and red dots and shortwave radios? I know I have and I'm sure you have too. Great to have all those items around now, but after an EMP, those items may actually save our life. What's an EMP? An EMP is an electromagnetic pulse that attacks large and small circuitry and can destroy entire power grids and also smaller electronics like computers and cell phones. Experts say a single EMP detonated at the right location and altitude could take out the entire United States power grid. In times of great crisis like a grid down power failure caused by an EMP, those expensive electronics can greatly increase our chances of survival, so it's important to protect our electronics in case of such an event in what's called a Faraday cage. What is a Faraday cage? Well, a Faraday cage is a protective conductive metal enclosure that protects the electronic items inside from external electromagnetic forces that can damage and destroy microcircuitry. The two most common containers we can use to make a proper Faraday cage are ammo cans and metal trash cans. Both of these offer a basic conductive metal shell that we can then further build upon to create a proper Faraday cage. You should be able to construct one of these for a cost between five to fifty dollars depending on where you get your container and your liner. Okay, now let's go step by step on how to properly construct a Faraday cage from both an ammo can and a trash can and we'll start with how to do it with an ammo can. When selecting an ammo can for a Faraday cage, you want to go on the larger size so you can have more space to store more electronics. This 30 caliber ammo can that measures only 10 inches across is way too small for a Faraday cage and probably not worth your time. This larger ammo can I have here measures nine by 17 by 15. And this extra tall ammo can measures six by 11 by 32. And this double stack 50 caliber ammo can measures six by 11 by 13. These ammo cans were all purchased at a local Army Navy surplus store. The majority of these larger can types are all going to be previously used. So you're going to want to inspect them for a few reasons, including rust. Ideally, you don't want any rust, but if you do have a little rust, I would clean that off as much as possible with some steel wool pads. And then you can quickly repaint up the spots with some quality spray paint. Second, you wanna make sure that the rubber gasket is still intact. You're going to still need to protect all of the electronics from both moisture and oxygen. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your rubber seal is fully intact. Third, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can have good lockup on your ammo can. What do I mean by that? Well, you wanna be able to have to close the ammo can with your entire hand and some force. If you can close the ammo can with minimal force and just a single finger, the seal on the ammo can is gonna to be too weak. So if you can, make sure to test your ammo can before you buy it. After you have selected your ammo can, you then want to figure out what type of non-conductive liner you want to use to line the can to protect the electronics. You can see here we have several examples of lined ammo cans. A taller can like this that can hold some full-size firearms, and that way you could keep your red dots and flashlights still mounted on your gun while also protecting them from an EMP. In this can we used thick cardboard. If you use cardboard, try to use the thickest and highest quality cardboard you can locate. And with this ammo can, we used poster board from an art supply store as a liner. This will offer a little bit of cushioning as well as keep our electronics off the metal surface of the can. And with this other can, I have used an old carpet remnant. This was an old piece of carpet I got for free. 
This old carpet is great though because it's so old fashioned it has a real rubber as its base under the carpet and rubber is great for a non-conductive liner. Okay, now we're gonna go step by step on adding a non-conductive liner to our double stack 50 caliber ammo can. Some of the items we'll need for this include a used yoga mat I got off Amazon for $7. This is going to provide a great liner for both our ammo can and trash can. We'll also need a pair of scissors, a marker, a measuring tape, and some type of glue. In this case, we're gonna use spray glue. First, we are going to measure the inside dimensions of the sides and the bottom of the can. We can actually lay the can on the mat and trace out the sides and the bottom using a Sharpie marker. We're going to trace out two pieces for the bottom. We want to double it up because for long-term compaction from the storing the items inside. After you have all the sides and the bottoms traced out on your liner, you can then start cutting them out with your scissors. After the basic sizes have been cut out of the liner, you can then shave off any excess with the scissors to make sure you have a precise fit before you glue them in place. Now that we have our pieces cut in the correct dimensions, we are going to glue them in place. Depending on what liner material you're using, you can use different types of glue. Because this yoga mat is easy to work with, we are going to use spray glue. If your liner won't stay flat, you can weigh it down with something heavy like a weight while the glue is driving. Okay, now we have all our non-conductive metal liner pieces cut out and glued in place. The next step will be to sandpaper all the metallic edges on the top of the Faraday cage to remove the paint and expose the bare metal. You want to make sure to leave a little room on the top edge of the ammo can so we can get our sanding done and also so we can still close the can properly. The sanding can be done with a metal file and or sandpaper as we're only removing the paint from the top edge. We have to expose the metal because after we are going to add several layers of aluminum foil to this and we want to make sure that we have a good metal to metal contact. All right, now that we have our sanding complete, we want to add several layers of aluminum foil to the top sanded edge so we can create a metal to metal seal with no seams and no gaps. You want to make sure that this is nice and smooth and there are no burrs before we add the two to five layers of heavy duty aluminum foil. If you have room and can effectively close the lid, you can add up to five layers of foil, but you want to make sure that you use at least two. Now that we have several sheets of aluminum foil laid across the top, we're going to lube the rubber gasket with silicon. The silicon is going to be a little gentler on the foil when we close the lid and will also keep the rubber seal moisturized so it doesn't dry out and crack. All right, now we have completed our ammo can Faraday cage and now let's move on to our trash can which is gonna give us a much larger storage space so we can store even larger electronics. Now this is a 31 gallon metal trash can. I got this off Amazon. Before we put the liner in here, we are going to add some extra protection along the seams and any gaps that we can see. We can quickly locate gaps by placing a light in the can and turning off the room lights. We can see that there are some gaps by the metal handles and also on the top of the lid by the handle. So we are going to put copper tape to the seams and handle gaps. First, we will put a few layers of tape by the handles and then we will do the side seams and also do all the way around the bottom seam as well. When the taping is completed, we are now ready to add our non-conductive liner and we are going to use a yoga mat just like we did with the ammo can. This mat will have to be cut into three separate segments because the trash can has an upward taper to it. The three pieces will be overlapped and glued in place. After we have the liner measured out, we are going to glue it in place with the spray glue. And just like the ammo can, we are going to put two layers of material in the bottom of the can because of compaction from the weight of our stored electronics. You can see that this Faraday cage is large enough to store items like a portable solar generator. Next, we are going to make our own gasket on the trash can lid to act as a cushion to push down the aluminum foil onto the edge of the trash can. In this case, we are going to line the entire inside of the lid. 
make sure to add extra spray glue on all the edges. You can see the excess spray glue here. For this trash can Faraday cage, you're gonna need the extra wide 24 inch aluminum foil as the can is about 18 inches wide. Like the ammo can, we are going to use two to five sheets of aluminum foil to provide the most protection possible while still being able to close the lid properly. We have now completed both our ammo can Faraday cage and our trash can Faraday cage. Now we can test both of these cages at home using common at home methods, both with radio signals and cell phone signals. If you place your cell phone in a properly sealed Faraday cage and call it, it should act as if the phone's turned off by going straight to voicemail. Now you can do an at-home radio test simply by taking a radio and putting it on a local station, turning up the volume all the way, and then place your radio inside the Faraday cage. And then your Faraday cage should completely seal out any radio signal that the radio receives so you hear no sound whatsoever. And you can see this Faraday cage trash can right now is so effective even without the aluminum foil, but with the aluminum foil it's greatly going to enhance the protection factor of our electronics. There are definitely more sophisticated laboratory methods of testing the EMP protection factor on your Faraday cage, but these are both great at home methods you can use. Now let's talk about an option you can use to amplify the protection factor even more on your Faraday cages, and that's through the concept of layering. Layering is going to be using more than one metal shield to further amplify the protection factor of your cage, and you can do this in several different ways. One example of layering would be to add a smaller Faraday cage to our larger Faraday cage, like adding our ammo can to our trash can. Another method would be to take our ammo can Faraday cage and place it in a metal storage cabinet. Before we place it in the cabinet, we would want to make sure we don't have any metal to metal contact with the cabinet. So we would add a pre-cut rubber mat that the ammo can can sit on so there is no direct contact with the metal shelving. And the third method would be to make sure that we store our Faraday cage inside our basement below ground level behind a concrete wall. Although the dirt and concrete will not provide the same protection factor as an additional metal shell, it'll still provide more protection than say storing your Faraday cage in a high rise apartment as EMP energy works from line of sight from the blast radius. And I also want to quickly mention about grounding your Faraday cage and how it's completely unnecessary and provides no additional protection for your electronics from an EMP. If you're protecting your electronics from a lightning strike, then grounding would be necessary, but not from an EMP. This is explained clearly in this book. Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms which will provide all the baseline knowledge and understanding of a Faraday cage you need, in case you're interested in learning more about Faraday cages or EMPs.